before I get started, I'll put on some, some of this gloves in a bottle, which is wonderful stuff. Keeps my hands safe from any chemical that might be going on. The underpainting is going to be very prominent in the final painting. Many times I've had students taking my classes and they'll finish the whole underpainting and then they'll switch to oil and they'll do an entire oil painting on top of their underpainting completely or almost completely obliterating all the work that's been done. That is, would be a waste of time and energy. So uh, much of this is going to show through and the oil paint, the underpaint rather, shows through in three different ways. Number one, the underpainting shows around the paint that I'm going to put on top. That is to say, I'll put a, I'll put a, a stroke of paint down like this. This is oil paint, opaque, or fairly opaque oil paint. But on this side of the stroke, and on this side of the stroke, and on this side of the stroke, the underpainting shows. Does it make sense? Number two, an underpainting shows up by showing through the painting that's done on top. Again, I put a, a stroke of oil paint on top of this, but you and I, if we're honest, recognize that this stroke was not truly opaque. It may be mostly opaque, but we can actually see through it and see the color that's underneath. So we see right there. And this is number three, the more obscure, but possibly the most important way that an underpainting affects the overpainting is that affects, let me see, I'll write it this way. It uh, influences the choices that the artist makes for what color to put on top. In other words, if I have, if here's a section of my underpainting, somewhere, anywhere there in the painting, and I'm trying to decide what color to put on top of this, the color that I choose to put there is going to be greatly influenced by the color that's already there in the underpainting. So if you keep that in mind, you'll understand that underpainting is very, very important. <laughs> 